Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. You're just in time to join me on another journey through that uncharted, limitless, mysterious world of your own imagination. It has been said that a man who tries to please two women satisfies neither and succeeds only in vexing himself. So many men have heard of this most prudent and profitable advice. Indeed, they acknowledge it. They agree with it. They even respect it. Why don't they follow it? Why are we stopping here, Silas? Such a lovely night. The sea is so calm. There isn't a soul in sight for miles around. Oh, yes. It's as if we own the entire world and we're all alone in it. Yes. You know, on a night like this, problems seem so far away. Oh, we have no problems. We don't. I do. Oh. What's your problem, darling? It's not what. It's who. Well, then, who is your problem? You are, my dear. Me? What kind of problem could I possibly be? A problem I must get rid of. Silas! 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 What are you doing? No, Silas, if there's anything you say, please don't! Silas! 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 Our mystery drama... Too Many Women Can Kill You was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Larry Haynes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It was Sigmund Freud, the master himself, who said, The great question, which I have not been able to answer, despite my 30 years of research into the feminine soul, is what does a woman want? Well, such a question may have disturbed the immortal doctor, but not the man you are about to meet. His name is Silas Cunningham. And if you were to ask him, what does a woman want? Silas Cunningham would look at you in all sincerity and say, well, every woman I've ever met has always wanted me. And it's evidently true. Because there is one woman who wants Silas forever, even after she's dead. Go in with her now, Silas. Is she uh, better, Doctor? No. But Doctor Pierce, go see her now, while you can. Silas, is that you? Yes, darling. Oh, I, I want to tell you. Please. Georgia, please, save your strength. Oh, I, I have nothing to save my strength for. Listen to me. I, I'll, I'll be here. Of course you'll be here. You'll get there. I'll be here after I'm dead. Darling, I, I I'll don't even... I'll be in this room. In this room. Our room. I love it so much. Yes, yes, darling. Oh, no, no one will see me, but you, you'll see me. Yes, dear. No one will hear me, but you'll hear me. You you believe that, don't you? Don't you? Yes, yes, I believe it. Oh, darling, we, we love each other so much. We will not... We refuse to be parted, even even by death. Oh, hold my hand. My uh, darling, Julia. I'll, I'll come back to you, Silas. I'll never leave you. I... Julia? Julia? Doctor? Doctor Pearson? Hello, Marilyn. I was asleep. Of what? I'd be stood up. Now, when did I ever break a date with you, darling? Why are you late? I didn't take the early train to town. Why not? Well, I begin... Each day, with a visit to Julia's grave. Really, sir? Yes, I arrive each morning at nine and and sit an hour. And do what? Meditate. Oh, you, you're such a fraud. No, darling, how can you say that? 
I suppose everyone in the village knows about it. Oh, yes, yes. The talk of the town seems to be how grief-stricken I am. <laughs> you have absolutely no moral. Oh, but it's true, dear. I am grief-stricken. After the way she drove you crazy? Oh, was all that just talk? For my benefit. Oh, Julia was all right in her way. She made very few demands of me. If it weren't for that occult nonsense she was all wrapped up there, I, I could have even been happy. Why is it so important for you to create this appearance of the bereaved and ravaged lover? Well, when very rich wives die young, certain nasty-minded, suspicious persons may begin to formulate all sorts of uh, evil thoughts. Hmm. I understand. And so for a year or so, there should be a show of decorum. I still have the apartment. But there's no reason why we shouldn't enjoy the estate. Boating, tennis, so much to do. Darling, I want you out there. But doesn't that go again? No. No, no, because you see, I decided to write a book. Book? Yes, and I'll need an editorial assistant. <laughs> You're going to write a book? About what? About the occult. The supernatural, the very strong possibilities of communication with the dead. Oh, but you know as well as I do that that's all nonsense. Oh, please, dear. This book is to be dedicated to the memory of my beloved wife. Silence. Now, you have had considerable experience in the publishing field. You were Julia's very best friend. And besides, as far as uh, outward appearances go... We shall be impeccably chaperoned. By who? By the redoubtable Mrs. Watson herself. I shall ask her to stay on as housekeeper. Mrs. Watson? Mm-hmm. Madam Hatchet, say. My darling, she radiates respectability from every pore. When do I report for duty? Saturday. Call when you're ready. I'll have Hastings drive into town and pick you up. Well, here's to the book. And, uh... To other things. <laughs> Mr. Cunningham, I brought you some nice hot tea. Oh, come now. You must have something. Oh, look, I know how you feel. Everyone knew it was a, a real love match, you and that wonderful lady, Mr. Soul. But would Julia Cunningham want you to despair like this? Thank you, Mrs. Watson. What would I do without you? Good evening, Silas. Oh, Dr. Pearson. Um, you want to fetch me a cup of that tea, Miss Watson? Yes, Doctor. Thank you. Mrs. Watson says you don't eat. Thought I'd stop by to see if you're all right. Oh, I'm fine. I'm worried about you. Me? Your marriage was something special, Silas. Well, every marriage is special. You and Julia. No two people ever seem to be more close, more content, more in love. She was everything to me, Doctor. Everything. In a marriage like yours, when one partner goes, well, sometimes the other one loses all interest in life. Now, don't let it happen to you, Silas. Oh, I don't care much about anything right now, Doctor. Don't get hold of yourself. Don't let your mind wander. Don't shut yourself away. Life must go on. And it can be quite a life for you. She came into all her money last year. You know, I'd give every penny to bring her back. Yeah, you would. That's what worries me. What are you saying, Doctor? Uh, Julia was very much taken with the idea of being able to communicate with the dead. It was a very sincere belief. I'm sure you discussed it. Even decided that in the event one of you died, there'd be an attempt at communication uh, from beyond the grave. Doctor, this is a very personal and private matter between Julia and me. I notice you say is instead of was. I'd rather we don't discuss it. In those final feverish moments, she talked about it. She said... I know what she said. She said her spirit would always be in her room. Doctor, why do you insist because on... Because it's hokum. Sane, sensible people know these things simply can't happen, period. Well, don't you worry about it. I worry because in this world there are all sorts of unscrupulous confidence operators who prey upon vulnerable people, people like you. Well, I can take care of myself. Your trade, Dr. Pearson. Oh. Well, one thing's in your favor. Mrs. Watson's staying on. 
And she's the most level-headed person I know. Mrs. Watson, can I depend on you to keep Mr. Cunningham here out of trouble? Yes, Doctor. You can depend on it. And you can depend on me. I've got a bead on them now. Oh, darn, I missed them again. Oh, well. It's too nice a day to hit anything anyhow. I just feel like making some noise in the woods. Mr. Cunningham... What is it, Hasty? Well, I don't know. I, I don't talk to you. I mean, I, I don't know what... Well, why don't you want... start at the beginning, Hasty? Yes, sir. Uh, look, you know what's just happened to me, Mr. Cunningham? No. What happened? Well, I've been fired. Fired? Well, how could you be fired? Well, that's what I can't figure. Well, who in the world could have fired you, Hastings? Oh, Lady Iron Pants. I mean, Mrs. Watson. Well, boy. Well, I don't know. She comes up to me and she says, Hastings, you're finished. Here's your money. Get out of here. Just like that. Well, I don't understand why. Well, she figures with Mrs. Cunningham passed away, she can rule the roost, you know what I mean? She's always had it in for me, anyhow. Why, Hastings? I guess I'd pop off about her. Pop off? How? Well, I was only kidding, but it, it was about, uh, about sex. <laughs> sex? Oh, come on now, Hastings. Why would anyone talk that way with Mrs. Watson? Why, she must be at least, uh, well, at least, uh... Yeah? Uh, how old do you think she is? Well, late 50s, even 60, maybe over. Uh, next time, take a good look. She ain't even 40 yet. And she's been a widow 18 years. Oh, well, I'm sure we can adjust the matter. Well, I, I told her to go soak her head. I told her, Mr. Cunningham hired me. Therefore, only Mr. Cunningham can fire me. Uh, is that right? Yes, Hastings. That's right. Now, you go back to the garage. You'll have to go to the city this afternoon. <laughs> If I'm to perform my duties in a satisfactory manner, I must have the right to hire and fire, Mr. Cunningham. Yes, yes, of course, Mrs. Watson. It's just that Hastings has been with us for such a long time. I dismissed him for good cause. He's a thief. A thief? I found out. He's been getting together with some of the service places in town. We've been paying bills for repairs that were never made, for gasoline that we never bought. Oh? Are you sure? I'm positive. The sooner he's off the premises, the better for all concerned. Well, it's just that I, uh, I would want him to drive into the city this afternoon. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm expecting a call from, uh, from, uh, uh Mrs. Ralston. Marilyn Ralston, of course. Uh, she called while you were out shooting. Oh, did she say what time she wants to be picked up? If we fire Hastings, I'll drive in myself. Oh, that won't be necessary, Mr. Cunningham. What do you mean? She isn't coming out this afternoon. Oh, something the matter? Or any afternoon, for that matter. Why? Did she suddenly change her mind? No. But I told her that you had changed yours. What are you talking about, Mrs. Watson? I never told you I changed It my... wasn't necessary for you to tell me, sir. I acted in your best interest. Mrs. Watson, I'm very capable of determining my best interests. And furthermore... Yes, Mr. Cunningham? What are you staring at? That, uh... That bracelet. Yes, this bracelet. Well, how dare you, Mrs. Watson? That was my wife's bracelet. I know. Well, what right do you have she to wear... She told me I could have it. She whispered it to me. Well, that's a lie. The day she died. It isn't true. The day she died of, uh, oh, what did the good Dr. Pearson say? An infection? <laughs> Nobody questioned dear Dr. Pearson's diagnosis. How fortunate he signed the death certificate without questioning it himself. You couldn't prove of anything. Of course not. I couldn't prove anything, but... Now, if they were to exhume the body and uh, perform certain tests... Oh, but they would never do it. Unless someone suggested it strongly. And uh, as of right now, I don't plan to suggest it. <laughs> You get what you consider to be the perfect setup for the perfect murder. You get rid of a woman who is a thorn in your side, only to discover you've just acquired one who could be a rope around your neck. 
The rope either gets tightened or loosened when I return shortly with Act Two. On her deathbed, Julia Cunningham promised her husband Silas she would communicate with him from the other world. However, it now develops that Silas may have more trouble than he can handle in this world. It seems that Mrs. Watson, the faithful housekeeper, has discovered that Silas had actually hastened Julia's exit from what is sometimes described as this veil of tears. Mrs. Watson, what makes you think I would have something to fear from an autopsy? Isn't it obvious? Isn't what obvious? The situation we find ourselves in. Now, if you didn't fear an autopsy, this bracelet would be off my arm, you'd fire me on the spot, and I would be out on my ear. Now... I know. Just what do you know? I know I was right about the bottle of poison. What bottle of poison? Oh, come, sir. It was in your room. I made a few discreet inquiries. I learned from a doctor that small, steady doses could produce symptoms which might appear to indicate an intestinal infection, and it would be treated as such until suddenly the patient would die. Incidentally, that doctor was not Dr. Pearson. And, uh, just how would I be implicated? Well, if, if I were to voice my suspicions strenuously enough, and if the coroner should find poison... Oh, I see. Uh, Isn't it your duty as a reputable citizen to, uh, report this? Oh, yes, it is. Why haven't you done so? Well, I could set in motion a chain of events that could place you on a scaffold or in a prison for life. And I asked myself, now, what would be in all this for me? Well, the satisfaction that you had performed your duty as a responsible citizen of a democracy. Oh, I've been doing that all my life, and I have very little to show for it. And so I said to myself, Vera? I'll wait till you didn't know my first name was Vera. Well, to be honest, I didn't even know you had a first name. That's true. To you, I've always been the invisible, Mrs. Watson. And so, for the first time in my life, I did something different, unusual, unprecedented. And what was that? For well, once, I thought about me, my own welfare. You see, Mr. Cunningham, you had committed the perfect crime. Well, how? You seem to have detected it. Oh, the key element... Dr. Pearson. Old, fumbling, superannuated Dr. Pearson. Well, he's not all that incompetent. Oh, no. He's merely obsolete. And you counted on that. You counted on him accepting your wife's death as a purely natural event and getting a death certificate without an autopsy. Ah. Uh, well, Mrs. Watson, now what? I assume you intend to blackmail me. Well, that's a harsh word. How much money do you want? Oh, I don't want any money. You don't want any money? No. Well, then what do you want? I want you. You want me? Yes. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> what do you think it means? I want to be Mrs. Silas Cunningham. Would you mind saying that again? I think you heard it. Yes, I heard it. I can't believe it. <laughs> You know, people like you are completely unaware of people like me. As human beings, our mission in life is to serve, to be useful, to cater to all your creature concerns. But I have feelings, I have desires, emotions, yearnings. Well, I... Uh... I'm only three years older than you are. That's young enough. There's still time enough for me to enjoy a rich, exciting life. <laughs> I've heard of shotgun weddings, but... Why turn you over to the police? I have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Finally, Vera Watson, you two can become somebody. Nobody's maid, nobody's servant. Cross the line. You know, I, uh... I wish I could say I admire you. Oh, well, we'll, uh... We'll let a year go by, a decent interval, and then we'll announce our engagement. Now, I can assure you, Mrs. Watson, you're hardly my type. Oh, perhaps. But you're mine, and after a while, I'll become yours. You think so? Oh, you'll come to value me when you know me better. Oh, by the way... Yes? 
Unlike so many women in love, Mr. Cunningham, I'm not blind. Uh, for example, I see how you've been glancing at your shotgun. Oh, have I been doing that? <laughs> well, I, uh, I wouldn't recommend anything hasty, sir. You see, I've written a letter to my sister. It's to be opened in the event of my death. Need I say more? No. I think you've said quite enough. life once again. I'll be all right. Silas, you're not getting all twisted up in that occult business, are you? You're not getting visits, I hope. Doctor, I love my wife very much. And I still haven't recovered from the shock of having lost her. And I wish that everyone would let me alone. All right, Silas. I'll leave you some vitamins. Oh, Mr. Cunningham. Oh, good morning, Dr. Pearson. Good morning, Miss Watson. Our friend here looks a bit peaked. Hasn't been eating much, I bet. No, but I'm on my way to town to buy some things to tempt his appetite. I'll give you a lift. Oh, thank you. I just have to stop by the kitchen to leave some instructions. I'll see you outside in a couple of minutes. Hmm. You know, Silas, something's different about that woman. Different? No. In what way? Well, for one thing, she looks much younger. For another, she's not too bad looking. I hadn't noticed. Something's come over here. Now, what do you suppose it could be? I haven't the faintest idea. Hello? Hello. Is Mrs. Watson there, please? Uh, no, I'm sorry. She's off. Oh. Well, uh, will she be back soon? Well, it's hard to say. She's downtown shopping. Oh, uh, could you take a message? Yes? I'm her sister. Her sister, Emma. It's, uh, it's about the letter. The letter? A couple of weeks ago, she gave me a letter. And she said, uh, I was to open it only in case she, uh, well, she'll know which letter I mean. Uh, yes. Well, uh, tell her the letter is gone. Oh? I, uh, put it in a wooden box with some of my things and, uh, Uh, yes, certainly. Thank you. Don't mention it. Good evening, Mrs. Watson. Oh, good evening, Mr. Cunningham. Is this how you spend your evenings, Mrs. Watson? Knitting? Knitting, reading, listening to music. Oh, I've often wondered what you did with your time. Oh, that's not true. I don't imagine you ever gave me a second thought. Well, for better or worse. Do you know what I, uh like to do on a lovely night like this? No. Go out in the boat. Well, why don't you? Well, I, uh, never cared to go out alone. Are you asking me to go with you? Mm-hmm. Why? Well, it's, uh, part of my courtship, Mrs. Watson. Oh, you are a remarkable man, Mr. Cunningham. Uh, you are a remarkable woman. <laughs> you know, actually, you were right the other night. You're the woman I need. The woman who can hold me in balance. 
Vera. Yes? Yes, Vera. You know, I have the feeling that I'm uh, falling in love with you, Vera. Mr. Cunningham. My name is Silas. Uh, Silas. Vera, I need you. I need your strength and your good sense. Well, we... We'll be very good for each other. You'll see. Oh, yes. Yes, you'll supply the common sense and I'll supply the romance. Now, how about that boat ride? Oh, I'm very happy. Oh, Silas, life is so unpredictable, isn't it? Yes, that's the one thing you can say for sure. A month ago, who would believe it? You and I would be drifting along out here close together. You know, it's getting a bit late. Oh, do we have to go back in now? Well, we, uh, we'd better if the breeze is freshening. We may be in for a gale. You wouldn't want to be blown out to sea, would you? Oh, no. Well, we, uh, we must do this tomorrow. Silence. Yes. And where are we headed? I mean, we're not going toward shore. Oh, that's right. But you said... What did I say? Well, that it was time to go home. I'm going home. What am I saying? What I'm saying is there's no one within miles, and this should be far enough. Far enough for what? Well, you see, you took the boat out tonight all by yourself. And I guess you fell overboard. Silence! And here you go. Oh, no, 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 you must have forgotten my letter to my sister. Don't, don't! Silence! I can't wait! Yes, I know. I can't help! Silence! Oh, uh, I forgot to tell you. She had an accident last week. She went out in the boat. And she drowned. It was a terrible thing. But why did you instruct her to tell me to forget all about you? Darling, I can explain everything. Well, it had better be a fantastic explanation. Still want to see me? I shouldn't. But? How long will it take you to get here? Give me an hour. Hey, darling. Sure thing. Well. What? Looks as if that poor girl's going to get stood up again. Well, who, who are you? Wouldn't be a good idea for the two of you to be seen together. Now, wait just one minute. What are you doing here? Who are you? How do you do, sir? I'm your new housekeeper. Now, see here. Let's cut this nonsense. I'm your new housekeeper for a very good reason. My name is Emma. Emma? You remember? Emma? Vera Watson's sister. Oh. Oh. And the reason I'm your new housekeeper is because I found the letter. First, Julia cramped his style. Goodbye, Julia. Then, Vera Watson had him cornered. Goodbye, Vera. Now, here comes Emma. It never rains, it pours. What are we going to do about Emma? This will be the exclusive business of Act Three when I return shortly. How does Silas Cunningham keep track of all his women? They all fall madly in love with him. They all want him. How does he manage them? Well, some of them have accidents. For example, his wife died of a stomach ache. His housekeeper drowned. It seems she went out in the boat by herself and fell overboard. Or anyhow, that's what the sheriff thinks. Now, the latest woman who has entered his life is Emma. That's right. Emma. Yes, I uh, spoke to you on the telephone. That's right. And I told you about the letter. Uh huh. What are you doing here? I didn't think there was anything to that letter. Well, there isn't. I read that my poor sister, well, actually, she's my stepsister, a drowned. Well, you know, she shouldn't have gone out in that boat alone. Oh, 
she didn't go out in the boat alone, Silas. You went out in the boat with her. What did you do? Throw her overboard? Now, you can't prove that. I don't have to prove that. I still know about the other thing. All right, let's get this over with, huh? How much do you want? Oh, you don't catch on at all, Silas. What do you mean? I think you're kind of cute. Oh. Good. You know, you're obviously an intelligent woman. Why, uh, why don't we make a settlement? What did you have in mind? Well, uh... Before you tell me, let me tell you what I had in mind. I can marry you. And sue you for divorce and strip you clean. You know, you drive a hard bargain. <laughs> You'd have been better off with Vera. I'd have been better off with Julia. <laughs>
think I'll have any more coffee either. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. It has to be something. Oh, I, uh, I have these pains. What kind of pains? I don't know. I, uh, just pains. Oh, where? Everywhere. Do well, you want me to call a doctor? No. No, not yet. Not yet? Uh, what are you waiting for? I'm waiting for just exactly the right time. What do you mean by just exactly the right time? There's an exactly right time for everything. Now, I better go upstairs and lie down. Can you manage? No, I can manage. I can manage everything. Dr. Pearson? Doctor, this is Emma. Mr. Cunningham's housekeeper. Now, what is it, Emma? Dr. Pearson, Mr. Cunningham's been sick the past four or five days. Sick? What do you mean? Well, he can't eat. He has pains. Looks kind of feverish to me. Why didn't he call me? I said to him, call the doctor. He said he wanted to wait. Wait for what? Well, he said he wanted to wait for just exactly the right time. I'll be right there.
all perspective. To Dr. Pearson, Silas Cunningham was almost a saint. To Marilyn, he was a lovable rogue. To his wife, Julia, he was a sincere, devoted lover. To Vera, he was a killer. To Emma, he was a fool. Each of us is a combination of so many people. Have you ever tried to figure out your combination? It may unlock some hidden facets in your personality. On the Mystery Theater, we deal in hidden facets all the time. Try us again. Our cast included Larry Haynes, E.V. Juster, Rhina Rayburn, and Guy Sorrell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. What happened? Steve, you're... Uh, you're alive. Uh, yeah, I guess so. How are you? Hey, you're bleeding. Huh? Oh, I just... I, I just cut my head a little. It's, it's nothing. Ah! Uh, oh, I can't get up. I think I sprained my ankle. Maybe broken. Hey, here, give me a hand, Si. Uh, some sort of jagged rock under my back. Could you move it or, 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 or help me up? Yeah, let, let me see. Oh, it's, just, it's just a rock. Let me get rid of it and then... Get rid of it? Or use it? What are you waiting for? I, uh... I'm not waiting any longer. Well, then, for the love of... God. Oh. Oh. This time, you are dead. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.